Hello friends, in this video, I shall be talking to you a very basic information about the functioning of the low urinary tract in human beings, when it is normal and when it becomes abnormal. And I'll put forth before you a hydrodynamic perspective of the functioning. The urinary bladder remains in human body in two states. The first state is when it is gradually, gradually filling up, accumulating urine slowly and slowly. This phase of accumulation is called filling phase or also known as storage phase. When urinary bladder becomes full and the patient wants to void and pass urine, he finds a suitable time and suitable place and empties the bladder. So this part of the phase where bladder contracts to empty itself is called emptying phase or more popularly called voiding phase. So for the entire duration of the day or the life, the bladder remains either in the storage phase or in the voiding phase. Now once a student asked me, sir, out of these two phases, which phase is more important? And I want you to look at from the perspective that in one act of maturation, avoiding, a normal person should take about 30, 35 seconds. And an average person voids about four times a day or five times a day. So the time spent in four to five act of maturation is about how much? Two to three minutes. So the urinary bladder remains in a voiding phase only for two to three minutes and for the rest of the time in human body that is 23 hours and 57 minutes the bladder stays in a storage phase. Since nature has given such a long time for storage phase, a storage phase is more important in the body. During the storage phase, let me explain why I'm saying this. During the storage phase, the urinary bladder should behave in a very stable manner. That means when bladder is filling up, it should remain quiet. As it distends slowly and slowly, the pressure in the urinary bladder should not rise. For the entire duration, pressure should be low. And the person should not be aware of this state of filling. So there are three properties of the filling phase. And when the patient goes in a voiding phase, the bladder should generate a contraction in the detrusor body, which is a sustained contraction for the required amount of duration. And the pressure generated by the urinary bladder should not be too high, normal pressure. And bladder should empty completely. So you will appreciate that there are three characteristic features of storage phase and three characteristic features of the voiding phase. And in the filling phase, as you see in this diagram, there's a urinary bladder, which is a container. And then there's a urethral tube outlet, which is a conveyor. So the low urinary tract is a combo of container and conveyor. And when you see the function of container, the bladder, and I've already told you that during the filling phase, bladder should remain relaxed. This means the muscle of the bladder should not be more tonic than what it is. And this property of urinary bladder is called compliance, also called accommodation. The good compliance means bladder is relaxing appropriately in a manner that the pressure of the urinary bladder will not rise during the filling phase. And then the muscle of the urinary bladder should be such that it should not generate any twitching contractions. 
in the muscle. So if there are twitching contractions, the patient will become aware of the bladder filling and patient may like to pass urine and will manifest as frequency and urgency. And then I said, during the entire filling phase, the person should not be aware of this filling, filling phase. And that is why patients does not feel about it and he thinks it is not important. In the filling phase, when bladder is containing with these three properties, what is the function of the conveyor tube, the outlet? The conveyor tube is with the help of two sphincters, internal sphincter and external sphincter, which maintain their tonic contraction, the utha controls. So bladder contains and utha controls and that is how the filling phase is going on. When the patient moves in the voiding phase, the bladder moves in the voiding phase, the bladder contracts. And I told you three properties of the contraction phase. First is the contraction generated by the detrusor should be sustained. That means it should begin and keep contracting, contracting, contracting till the end, like a horse, which goes on till the end. So it's a sustained contraction. The pressure generated by the detrusor muscle should be normal, should not be more than 40 centimeter of water. And then it must empty completely. So that bladder contracts with these three properties and at the time when bladder is contracting, emptying, the urethral tube, the conveyor tube should open. And it conveys the urinary flow and uh, the sphincters are relaxed. So if you see the bladder stays in filling phase, it moves to voiding phase, from voiding phase to back to filling phase and voiding phase. This cycle goes on. How it becomes abnormal in terms of the urodynamics, the hydrodynamics only. And look at this model of filling phase where the bladder is containing and Jutra is controlling. And I told you these properties. How does it become abnormal? If instead of being relaxed, the bladder becomes stiff bladder, the muscle becomes stiff because of some fibrosis in it, because of thickening of the muscle, it is not relaxing properly. It is called poor compliant bladder. In simple terms, you may call it stiff bladder. Or else, instead of being stable bladder, it becomes unstable bladder. That means it is generating some pressure by muscle twitching and the pressure wave should not should be more than 15 centimeter of water. So it is an unstable contraction in the urinary bladder. This is an abnormality or instead of being unaware, patient becomes aware about it. And this awareness can be of any degree from minimum to maximum. So during the containing phase, if you get either of these three or two of these three or all of these three, then this becomes abnormality in the filling phase. In a similar manner, if the sphincters becomes, instead of being contracting, it becomes relaxed and outlet opens, the patient will leak urine. And this is known as a sphincteric incompetence. And the bladder, instead of being a container, will now become a leaking container. And it's called incontinence. So these are the abnormalities of the filling phase of urinary bladder, the storage phase of urinary bladder. When you see the same thing for the voiding phase of urinary bladder and how it becomes abnormal. Now look at this model again. Bladder is contracting and youth is conveying. And out of these three properties of the bladder, if it is an ill-sustained contraction, which means contraction may be occurring, relaxing, occurring, relaxing, occurring and relaxing. The urinary stream will become wavy. Instead of being a normal pressure voider, a patient becomes either a high pressure voiding or patient shows a low pressure voiding. Both the situations are abnormal. High pressure means obstruction to bladder outlet and low pressure means underactive detrusor. And the third abnormality is instead of emptying completely, the urinary bladder is not completely emptying, it's called incomplete emptying, which will manifest as 
post void residual urinary volume so there are three abnormalities which can happen with the contractile power of the urinary bladder you can have one of these you can have two of these you can have three of these different combinations can happen in different patients and in reference to the outlet which is meant to convey the urine without any obstruction during the contractile phase or during the voiding phase if it shows some obstruction somewhere condition is called bladder outflow obstruction or bladder outlet obstruction so friends this is how the normal hydrodynamics of urinary tract functions and this is how it becomes abnormal and that is the nomenclature that we shall be using so i hope with this small presentation you understood the basic this is the basic on which the functional evaluation of low urinary tract will base in clinical practice so thank you very much in case you have any questions you can send them to my email